Welcome back, everyone. This is episode seven of Behind the Page. My name is CJ Tallarico, and today I'm joined by a very special guest. Would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, yes, my name is uh, Jalen, or uh, Jay. It's, I'm so glad to be on the show. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, so we we have a lot of super exciting stuff to talk about today, um, those of which being Superman Birthright, which I made a community mm-hmm. post and a post on the Behind the Page Instagram account to read it by this episode. Uh, as well as the recent castings for Superman Legacy that are uh, Jay and I are both very excited for. So oh, yeah. we could just start talking about uh, Superman Birthright to start. So 12 issue series um, came out September 1st, 2003 and wrapped up September 1st, 2004. The official synopsis for the event is Birthright updates the Man of Steel's origin, breathing new life into the classic story of the superpowered son of a doomed planet destined to grow up to become the world's greatest protector, Superman. This series marked Mark Wade's return to DC Comics and Lionel Yu's DCU debut. Yeah. So it's pretty much like a retelling, sort of a reboot, but not really. It doesn't change too much stuff about Superman's origin, just for a post-Man um, of Steel by John Byrne audience. And yeah. a few years later, they ended up even retconning this with a different Superman origin story. Superman origin. Yeah, Secret Origin yeah. by Jeff Johns, but that still doesn't diminish how how special this book is in the slightest. Well, we'll get into some specifics, but but Jay, what are your I know you've read the book before, but what is mm-hmm. your initial impression of Superman Birthright? All right, initially, when I first read it, I was like, like um, okay, I got my boy Mark Wade, he's writing, he's writing. So I read the first issue, I was like, all right, this I like the art style by um you and um I was thinking like, okay, this is, it it started very slow. You know, Clark, he's a, um, he's basically in in Africa and he's a young journalist basically. And I was just seeing like, you know, where this is going to go. And then I got like a few issues deep and I'm just like, oh man, I just, I remember being up at like what, past one or two in the morning. I just binged the whole thing. I was like, oh yeah. Cause it, it starts off just with young Clark and you know him as a journalist and then it just he goes back to the states and he's with his parents and they give him his his iconic suit and you know we got you know just lex and matra it just it, it unfolds you know what i'm saying so mm-hmm. it was real cool reading it it's one it of my is. favorite it, book. it definitely it honestly might be my favorite that i've read we'll we'll get into some recommendations at the end uh i got um, a question yeah it, do you prefer Birthright or Secret Origins? I I think Birthright myself, mostly just because <laughs> I don't want to say it just yet. When we get later, um, okay. I want to talk about the ending. But I just feel like <laughs> the ending of Superman Birthright, I don't think there's another ending of any comic that like is more satisfying to me. Maybe, oh, yeah. if anything, Amazing Spider-Man 500. But... Okay. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, so the start of Superman Birthright, uh, it starts with uh, on Krypton, as a lot of Superman origin stories do. And from there, we see Jor-El and Laura Lorvan sending Kal-El off into space as the last son of Krypton, as the planet's about to explode. But what's really tragic about the way it's told in this book is that there's this uncertainty of Kal-El's future. They don't know if for sure that he'll end up safe, where he'll end up. But they send him off either way. And then from there, we cut to our story like Jay was talking about. We have Clark in West Africa. He's a freelance reporter. And it's not just like he immediately is this Boy Scout character we all know and love Superman to be. We really see him fall in love with Earth and all the kinds of life on it, while at the same time being unsure and questioning of his own heritage that he doesn't really understand yet. I really mm-hmm. liked the way that this book opens uh, and the way it Thanks. tells that story in West Africa. I have one moment from issue one. I'll put on the screen and I'll read it here right now where Clark's talking to some people there and he's asked if, um, or not really asked, but Clark's explaining his backstory and someone says, oh, so you're a product of the American heartland. And he says, proudly, though I'm not originally, I'm adopted. Not sure where I came from. Other than that, it's pretty far from Kansas. Uh, and he's asked, so you're searching for that place? And Clark says, no, more trying to find a place for me, maybe running out of places to look. And they say, perhaps that's because you've turned away from your birth legacy, Clark. Embrace who you are, 
there's really only one like you. And that like birth legacy line when I'm kind of hopping around here, but to yeah. Superman legacy for a bit, when Superman legacy by James Gunn first got announced, I was like, that's kind of a weird title, Superman legacy. I was like, that it would kind of make sense for like a flash subtext or, but it kind of confused me with Superman. I was like, I don't really get the legacy thing. But when I reread Birthright and I got to that point, it really did just, it started to make a lot of sense to me. Oh, yeah. And I'm really hoping that James Gunn pulls a lot directly from Birthright in this. Um, that I got this quote here from James Gunn where he said, it's been a, this is when he announced that he was directing Superman Legacy. And he said, it's been a long road to this point. I was offered Superman years ago and I initially said no because I didn't have I didn't have a way in that felt unique and fun and emotional that gave Superman the dignity he deserved. Then, a bit less than a year ago, I saw a way in. In many ways centering around Superman's heritage, how both his aristocratic Kryptonian parents and his Kansas farmer parents inform who he is and the choices he makes. That mm -hmm. just the way that Clark begins to understand his heritage as well as all that he gets from his Earth parents, John and Martha, I'm really hoping the way it's told in Birthright bleeds right into Legacy. Oh, yeah. It's that balance of, you know, from two different families, you know, Earth and Krypton. And it's interesting because, you know, the uh, the the House of El is, is this noble, aristocratic house, like some Game of Thrones type family. And then you get this, the uh, the Kent family, they're just farmers in kansas mm -hmm. and it's just i just love that story yeah. and it's like you know it's the perfect like i don't know like immigrant story as well because i think superman a big essence of the character is um you know someone who's not from here but is trying to fit in and you know loving this new place that they're in and i think james gunn when he talks about the whole like birthright and the legacy I feel like he's gonna draw a lot from uh, this story, because mm -hmm. um I know he's he's gonna draw from All Star Superman. I don't know how far of how much he's gonna draw from since you know that happens later in his life, of course. Yeah. So. Yeah, I definitely think we'll get a lot of nods to All Star Superman. Just like that's oh, yeah. the one story he's been posting over and over again. I know <laughs> All Star and, cover, and and you know you just got the um this this the panels is just iconic like mm -hmm. um. Just the artwork from was, Frank Quiet. Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah. sorry for cutting you off there. If we get a poster of David Corn Sweat sitting on that cloud like he is on the All-Star cover, mm -hmm. it's game over from there. Like, it's just, th that yeah. that's what yeah. the DCU needs. That will be one of the, probably the best uh, comic book movie posters ever. Definitely. It definitely yeah. has the potential to be. With that then, we can tr we'll transition back to Birthright in just a moment. But, mm -hmm. um... I mean, just because we're talking about it now, David Corrin Sweat as Clark Kent was recently announced, as well as Rachel Brosnahan as Lois Lane. Uh, David Corrin Sweat, people know from Pearl, Hollywood, We Own This City, and a lot more. And Rachel Brosnahan from The Marvelous Miss Maisel, House of Cards, and, House of Cards sorry, and even more. And it, since James Gunn said he has a long-term 10-year plan and probably more, that's perfect. We're going to see his journey for, for years, basically. Yeah. We're going to we're practically going to grow up with him. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's going to be it's going to be cool, especially that James Gunn had announced um, he's going to try. I don't totally know how it's going to work, but to have the actors bleed from movies to TV and animation and video games. Yeah. The same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it's, see that that's now that's really ambitious because I get the. um the movies and the animation, but saying video games as well, that's going to be the, um, I think the tricky part. That's going to be tough. I saw, yeah. I, I think it was on the A Hero Story podcast. They mentioned like, mm -hmm. it will probably just get like a crypto game that David Corn Sweat does like the home screen for or something. Like a, an app. <laughs> a super dog game. Yeah, that would be fun. Uh, yeah, like one of those runner games, which yeah. I can see happening and I would probably download it to be honest. Me too. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, this casting's great. Like, I I definitely have put a picture of David Cornswood on the screen by now. He looks just like Superman. A lot oh, of people are saying he looks just like a discount Henry Cavill. I think he just looks like a skinny, a, a more lean Superman. Yeah. Than and I love that, honestly. Yeah, that's exactly what he looks like. Mm -hmm. that's gonna you know what's weird? 
to be honest, I'm not familiar with David Corn stuff like that. But but Rachel, I'm I'm more familiar with her because mm-hmm. I watched House of Cards and the mm-hmm. character she played. Mm-hmm. And um she's not I'm not gonna say like she's not a uh, main character in the show of House of Cards, but as a side character in her performance, I remember her just so well. So well. Because um really good to she hear. left her mark. Yeah. Yeah, I know she's the main character in Marvelous Miss Maisel that I definitely want to check that out too. David Corn Sweat, like you said, I wasn't really familiar with him. I didn't def I definitely mm-hmm. didn't know him by name before all, right. all this, but I've just been familiar with him through being a fan cast for Superman. Oh and yeah. With that, like looking up clips of him and seeing little moments and interviews that he's been in. And back in 2019, he even made a statement saying that like he really wants the next take on Superman to be a more optimistic and bright take, which yeah. I mean, ended up being him. So hopefully we'll get to see that. Him and James Gunn will be a part of me, page, we hope. A part I'm a a big part of me is not really into fan casting and you know, mm-hmm. this guy should play this character and this and that. But when I was seeing his face and his name being floated to be the next Superman, I was in my head, I was just like, I think he should be Superman. I, I didn't say he anything. Like Superman. Yeah, yeah, he's just, just like Superman. Superman. I'm just like, mm-hmm. he should be Superman. Like perfect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can transition a little bit back to Superman Birthright on that and just keep hopping back and forth mm-hmm. whenever we want. Um, one thing that I really like about um, Superman Birthright is Clark's relationship with his father in the book, Jonathan Kent. Um, yes. <clears throat> Jonathan, he's like very hesitant in this book and kind of reserved to the idea of Clark being Superman and with that embracing his Kryptonian heritage because it, from Jonathan's perspective, it kind of feels like he just wants to leave the Kent name and kind of wants less to do with the family and that he's losing his son in a sense. But we get a really great moment in this of Clark reassuring him that he is who he is because of Jonathan Kent. And it's only because of him and the life that he lived before that Clark has the strength that Jonathan has shown him to go on and do what he will as Superman. Mm -hmm. That I'm really hoping we get a lot of draws between that Jonathan and Clark relationship in Legacy. Oh, yeah. Or just... The way um Jeff Johns writes them, or you know, for all seasons. With this, with this Pa Kent though, he's he's like you said, he's more reserved and he's more um against the whole embracing all fully embracing Kryptonian heritage, mm-hmm. and he feels like he's losing his son that he raised, which is which is complex because you know you have a lot of parents who raise their kids in a certain way, and when their kids um do something that is um you know embrace a new side of them or get a new belief or just Mm -hmm. they learn who they are parents they are like oh this is not the son i raised and i feel like that's just once again that's another relatable quality of superman Mm -hmm. because i personally can relate to you know being raised in a certain way and um like not like telling my parents you know it's like religion wise you know you, your you, your family thinks that you're one way, but you actually you have this other side of you. Basically, it's all these different complexities. You know, the double life that comes with that. Yeah, the, the yeah, the double. A lot of these exactly. Stories. It's the duality. It reminds me of like the duality, of, like you know, Daredevil, Batman, of course, Spider Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's really cool how it's done here. Um, that like Jonathan Clark relationship, it's. It's. I feel like it's a lot more complex than when, say, Jonathan Kent's reserved in like Zack Snyder's Man of Steel. Yeah. That that's yeah. a very. I don't want to say uncharacteristic. I mean, it is, but like, it's a very different version of being reserved. In the in Man of Steel, it's more of like, don't do it. Like, it's no. not worth it. Yeah. Exactly. It's the, it's the iconic. Yeah. <laughs> but um, in this, it it really is because he just feels like he's losing his son, but. Mm. I mean, a lot of the the values that Clark gets from being Superman come directly from Jonathan Kent, which I really appreciate about this this telling of Superman's right. origin. Oh, can I say one thing? Um, mm-hmm, of course. One of my favorite scenes in uh, Birthright. It's not that big, but you know, you always have that iconic oh, the Superman's about to wear their new suit, and you got Ma Kent just helping him, you know, design and yeah. you know get. The- Slouched and try to act all clumsy and the glasses I, I love that so much it's really good it is yeah um that yeah we we see in this book too a lot of um where like the glasses and like a lot of the 
the character that Clark Kent is as mm-hmm. he's going off into Metropolis and the Daily Planet. We kind of see that Clark Kent persona form uh, right. in the story, and we get a lot of the tellings of that. I wanted to ask you, too, one of the big things that they that Mark Wade kind of alters to a degree about Superman's origin, I mean, I guess just for the few years that this was the the origin for Superman, is that him and Lex went to school together. They, they knew each other back yeah. in high school. And Lex is this, when he was a kid, he was kind of had this obsession with isolation almost. And he had already viewed himself higher than others and that he was way smarter than everyone else. And until the final issue, Clark is really striving to still find the good in him. And it's not till the very end. He's like, all right, this is Lex Luthor. I just need to beat him. I can't just keep trying to be like, there's good in you. He he still recognizes that there is, but it takes a while for Clark to stop. He he still feels sorry, but to yeah. go past how he knew Lex was back in their Smallville days in Kansas. It's tragic because Lex, you know, he has this God complex. He's better than everyone else. But the only person he can kind of, you know, sit and talk to and relate to is Clark, right? And um that whole relationship just just corrodes throughout time, just over the years. And um, it's just bad because, you know, the only person that Lex could relate to and sit down and talk to is his rival. Mm-hmm. The person, the alien that he fears the most, you know, he thinks he's above, it's 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 Clark. And mm-hmm. um, that whole, you know, isolation period. I think the whole, um, that whole isolation thing that Lex has is also relatable. I'm not saying people well there's probably some people that can relate to Lex Luthor some billionaire out there but I'm saying you know everyone has that that feeling of you know not fitting in and Clark also has that same feeling what I think is also what makes them bond together in their early years Mm -hmm. because like um I think in the Silver Age origin Superman um and Lex they were um childhood friends until Mm -hmm. um the post-crisis Mark Wade um he just re he just brought back uh, the origin from many years ago, and you know it carried on to secret origins with Jeff Johns and them being raised and together in Smallville. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this like Lex Luthor, you know the origin where he he loses his hair, right? Mm-hmm. That's Silver Age, and and basically Mark Way took that that kind of dumb concept of oh, I'm mad at you because I'm bald now, and he, <laughs> he expanded it to make it deeper because you know we have a deeper connection plus you know it's not that old silver age writing yeah yeah way way deeper he made it that yeah. well how we see lex kind of develop in this story lex is the one if i'm not mistaken who reveals to the world superman is an alien and that is kind of what brings on a lot of the the xenophobia and public mm-hmm. kind of starting to be doubtful of superman he went from being this boy scout this american boy scout to now he's not from where they are he's from somewhere else and they kind of view him as possibly a foreign threat that right. there it's clark trying to get the respect and the respect of the public again but lex is lex is really just a menace in this book he's an like, ass <laughs> the the third act of this book is lex sends well the way that the issue starts is the reader from the perspective of the reader it looks like krypton is invading earth yes that that's a really cool way to start telling the story but then we start to learn it's lex made all these robots and like fake warriors kryptonian warriors with the superman emblem so that the public scared of him and eventually superman defeats them all it's revealed that it is from lex but it's it's just such a such a punch in the face to clark's heritage that he doesn't even understand yet yeah and it's just that whole meticulous scheming of, oh, I'm going to make Krypton look like they're invading Earth. That's that's just classic Lex, just being an asshole. I, mm-hmm. I don't know how else I can put it, because he, he's... Think about Lex, you have to admire. He's such a smart guy. You'd be like, man, I wish you used all that, you know, that intelligence somewhere else instead of mm-hmm. just being a hater. You know what I'm saying? You just can't help yourself, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, well... I, we can do another tangent off of that real quick before we get back to birthright yeah. again. July 25th, we might get that story in Superman, The Last Days of Lex Luthor. Yeah. It comes out very, very soon, and it's a spiritual successor to Superman Birthright by Mark Wade. 
uh, with art by Brian Hitch, where the plot mm-hmm. is essentially um, Lex Luthor is about to die and Superman is the only person that can save him. And I'm excited for that. Me too. That's going to be a really mm-hmm. interesting story. Uh, I think it's a three issue story and it'll come out every other month, possibly a black label. I didn't know uh, Hitch was doing the uh, art, though. That's mm-hmm. cool. So yeah. now he's an ultimate invasion and this, so. Oh, right. yeah. I forgot he was ultimate invasion. Yeah. I mean, he was great in that. Yeah. So I have this quote from Mark Wade right here about his, how he feels about Superman birthright. Um, This is. I'm not totally sure when this quote was from. I just know it came out after Man of Steel, the movie came out. But mm-hmm. Mark Wade has gone on to say, um, even when I interviewed him earlier on, during episode one of this podcast, and he stands by that Superman Birthright is the project he's most proud of to this day, that in this quote, he says, maybe it's long tail reception that at the time it was originally serialized. It was sort of ignored and downplayed. But it's since gone through at least eight trade paperback printings, and there's not a convention or signing that I attend where a dozen or more fans don't bring it up to me to autograph. Thanks to Man of Steel, a lot of readers seem to be rediscovering it, or rediscovering it, or discovering it for the first time, sorry. And that's what makes me extraordinarily happy. At the time it was published, my dream project after all, I joked that it was like finally being able to play Carnegie Hall, but no one was in the audience. But the audience that the story has built since is far more rewarding. I'm proud that my name is on a perennial. Yeah. You know, it's 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 ironic he says that about a man of steel. If you if you ever find the if you ever go back but 2011, 2012, where Man of Steel first came out, Mark Wade wrote a very bad review of them. <laughs> yeah, I think it's yeah. more just that like Man of Steel adapts the this this story makes a point that the S, the, that logo, stands for hope. And I think that's kind of what led mm-hmm. a lot of people to discover Superman Birthright. Also, just it being a Superman origin story. A lot of people wanted to see mm-hmm. that told. In the well, yeah, that was a big origin yeah, at the time. Yeah. I read to a, there was a Reddit AMA with Mark Wade uh, talking about different interpretations of Superman and stuff. And he was like, mm-hmm. that's the beauty of Superman. There's really room for all these interpretations. But then he ended right. it with dot, 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 except for the ones where he snaps necks. Like, Mark Wade just kind of comes for the throat at Man of Steel sometimes. And, I mean, I'm I'm all there for it. I think it's hilarious. I, I, I agree, yeah. There is... I'm all, I'm all for different takes on characters. You know, Batman, Spider-Man, you know, Superman. But um, as long as the essence of the character is carried on from each version and... um. I would have to agree with Mark Wade on the fact that I don't think the essence for uh, was there for uh, Man of Steel because that thing. not that screaming <laughs> scene. No, definitely not. Oh man, that's isn't that a meme too? It, it's got to be. It's got to be somewhere. I know it's just as much as that, but uh, yeah. I mean, and that's. I think this is where where we'll really see the contrast between. James Gunn's DCU and the DCEU we just got they're both I mean I know technically I think Creature Commander Creature Commandos and maybe Waller comes out before Legacy but Legacy is really like the first movie in this saga the same way that Man of Steel was and I think we'll really see those differences in the way Superman's portrayed in these stories I think it will be that brighter more optimistic look that Dave and Corrin Sweat said he wanted from this next take and hopefully we'll be able to to Mm -hmm. represent that before we move into comic recommendations is there anything else from superman birthright that stands out to you oh actually before we move on i i started by saying how it starts with uh the parents sending kal-el off i would like to just quickly read the very last moments of issue 12 uh and talk about that for a bit So if you have not read this story, I definitely recommend going and reading issues one through 12 right now because I'm about to share the final moments from issue 12 where. All right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So in that kind of third act fight, Superman and Lex are fighting and Lex is he's able to do through weird comic book science magic stuff. He's kind of able to talk to through these screens. Krypton as it's about to explode that throughout the story we see him at um we see him tuning into like the council meeting where the higher ups and uh yeah exactly where they kind of declare that Krypton is doomed 
it's going to explode. And in the final moments when um, Lex and Superman are fighting, Superman sees an image of his parents on the monitor. And he goes up and tries talking to them, but the building starts collapsing and we don't really see what's said. Superman leaves the building with Lex. Da 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 da. Public starts liking Superman again after it's revealed that Lex was behind the Kryptonian warriors and all that. But we end, we cut back to Krypton. We cut back to where we last left off with them sending Kal-El off. We, we have uh, Jor-El and Lara and suddenly a screen appears and they see Clark Kent. They see Superman wearing the crest and he says, <laughs> mother, father, I made it. And then it cuts out and they kiss as Krypton falls. I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting emotional. You retelling it, holy shit! Like I know it's it's oh, like oh I remember when I first read it, I was honestly I I was in like my my college's cafeteria and I was like tearing up reading it, even in there with all the noise in the background. Yeah, I'm. I'd be the same way. I'd be reading in a public place, and then I just like I'm like I just it. can't <laughs> help it. Like this is just at because the very end, like the panels just get closer and closer on that mm -hmm. that hope symbol. And I, I honestly feel like there's not a more rewarding ending in a comic than Superman Birthright issue 12 of the final moments. Well, that's definitely, a, that's definitely up there with a rewarding ending. Mm -hmm. I think it's up there with the endings, like, you know, those iconic endings for, you know, All-Star Superman or the mm -hmm. ending to Dark Knight Returns by Frank Miller. Where yes. it's just like, wow, the ending, like, you ever read a book and you're just like, the ending was better than the, the whole like you know the story of how i got there you know? uh -huh. and but with birthright it was just full circle moment it yeah. I almost I almost teared up when he heard his his actual kryptonian name kal -El. yeah that that's the first time he hears he hears yeah. his name when he sees his parents sending him off yes that that's it's amazing mm -hmm. it, Mark it, it, really outdid himself with that one i have to say absolutely absolutely yeah. that there really is this question uh, going into superman the last days of lex luther as to why clark Kent is helping lex and there's he there's almost like a debt pay that clark has to pay to lex i imagine it has to be this that lex was how clark discovered his name he was mm -hmm. i mean even though he tarnished the reputation of it for a moment on earth he's really right. how clark was able to kind of get closer with his heritage to an extent yeah you know, and it's also, he otherwise wouldn't have been able to yeah, it's just also um superman in general is just his kindness and his compassion he's just no matter who you are no matter how bad you are he's gonna help you it's sort of like um if you read action comics by uh, philip kennedy johnson yes and there's um you know metallo's in there and there's a the part where just superman is like Metallo's like, you're still going to help me, like, what, find my uh, my my sister? And Superman's like, yeah. I'm just like, that's who Superman is, mm -hmm, you know. Superman. He'll just help you. Right before we get into recommendations, is there anything that kind of draws from Birthright you want to see in either Superman The Last Days of Lex Luthor or Superman Legacy? Um, Let me see. I, there's a, a scene where, um, you know, that panel of Superman's... He has that giant like Superman shield that that just that that yeah. like flash pages is beautiful. I would love to see that recreated mm -hmm. or, you know, the civilians, they're all helping out, you know, Superman. It reminds mm -hmm. me of uh, Sam Raimi Spider-Man where the uh, New Yorkers are you know, throwing two on the train or, or that. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're just New Yorkers in general are just helping out Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. I, I just love to see where civilians are not against the superhero and they're actually helping out the uh, superhero and standing up for him. Yeah, that's cool. I I love moments like that. I definitely do. Yeah. Um, that, yeah, just before getting into the recommendations, and I know I've said that like three times, <laughs> a movie recommendation would be, I think, Superman Man of Tomorrow, which I think you can find on Max. Mm -hmm. It's the start of this animated DC universe called the Tomorrowverse, but you can watch Superman Man of Tomorrow without watching anything else in it. Yeah. It's just like this cookie cutter Superman story. You get some Martian Manhunter action, some Lex Luthor. Parasite's the villain. Yeah, you get Lobo, and he's great in that. He's hilarious. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I definitely recommend checking that out if you're looking for... Uh, uh, I imagine Superman Legacy at moments is going to have a similar feel to that story. Just yeah. in like a, an early Superman kind of getting used to it all. That I definitely <laughs> think 
if you're looking forward to Superman Legacy and you like Superman Birthright, you would enjoy Man of Tomorrow as well. Oh, easily, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, another Superman movie I would recommend is probably uh, Superman vs. the Elite or um, the All-Star Superman movies. It's, it's great as well. Superman vs. the Elite is written by the same guy who wrote the uh, the comic Joe, uh, Joe Kelly, I think, yeah. And he wrote action, and it's he wrote you know action comics seven seven five. The oh. movie is better. The movie is better than the comic because it's basically an extended version of the comic. Because you know he gets to write way more and add way more scenes and nuance to it. That's really and the, cool. And the fights are just like a bunch of anime fights. It's, it's just so good. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's cool. So check those movies out when you have the chance. Um, but before you check those movies out, we have some comics for you to read too. Yes. Uh, I'll go first. I only have one to recommend. Um, mm -hmm. I know Jay had recently went on like a huge Superman read and was posting all about it on his Instagram. That That's why I'm really excited to hear what you have to say and for you to talk about it. But I want to recommend Superman Up in the Sky by Tom King. It's just a six mm -hmm. issue series of Superman going across the universe to save this one girl. And he has no real leads other than that she was taken up in the sky. That, I mean, against all odds, Superman flies up in the air into the infinite universe to find and save this one girl. Yeah. And it's really just all about how Superman is like, goes against the impossible. Yeah. And you can always turn to when you need hope, just the idea of Superman. And it really is Tom King's love letter to the character. And I feel yeah. it's a great jumping on point for Superman as well. It's just, I mean, I don't want to say it's, um, it's kind of anthology based, but there are a lot of just one off stories about Superman, all with that same central focus of he has to save this one girl. Yeah, I, I remember so much of uh, reading uh, Up in the Sky. Mm -hmm. it's, it's and, really uh, another thing about it is it, it's sort of I want to just say it's not only a love letter to a Superman, it's a love letter to just DC in general, because mm -hmm. you, you get like random characters like sergeant rock appearing like yeah who, a lot of people don't even know who the hell sergeant rock is but seeing him and superman side by side fighting nazis i don't want to get too deep but it's just like, come on you, can, you can't cool. get better it's you can't cool. get better than that like mm -hmm. amazing and the art by um andy cooper mm -hmm. yes that it's it, it the whole all each issue just looks phenomenal his art definitely there there was a moment it was my favorite tom king book but i think that has to go to Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow. See, I'm on issue three of that. Oh, you got to keep going with that. It's good. Mm -hmm. But let's hear your recommendations. All right. So the more I think about it, I uh, a lot of people don't talk about Alan Moore's work on uh, Superman. You know, you hear Watchmen or uh, Killing Joke. But I think his work on Superman is just, just so good because um, he wrote two essential Superman stories. He wrote... um. One issue, Superman Annual, is called uh, For the Man Who Has Everything. And it's it's about it's Superman's birthday. And Batman, Wonder Woman, and uh, Jason, they're going to the Fortress of Solitude. And they find Superman in, um, let's say, a uh, um, not-so-good state. <laughs> That's what mm -hmm. I'm going to say. And it's it shows you the core of um, Superman. And it also goes right back to, you know, Kryptonian heritage and it's it's it paints like a dream world of what Superman wants, you know, his dream family. That that issue is actually adapted in I think it's the second episode of Justice League Unlimited, and that's yes. written by J.M. DeMatteis, and that's it, yeah. it's just a great episode. Yeah, and you know the thing about that is, um, Alan Moore hates adaptations of his work, but he loves that episode. That's how it's you a know great that. episode. It's yeah. so good. Yeah, you know you you know you wrote it. You know you write well. When Alan Moore's like, nah, your adaptation is great. Mm -hmm. I mean, what what can't J.M. DeMatteis write? I, I don't know. He can write a he can write a biography about me. He doesn't even know me, <laughs> and it'd be perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I would suggest it's read for when you read for the man who has everything. Also, watch the episode. They have similar stuff, but then they have a little different themes. For the ep the Justice League episode, it's more family focused with the um mm -hmm. with um. The comic, it's it's more Alan Moore as in talking about different generations and the beliefs and 
how the old generation and their nostalgia of a bygone era clashing with the new and it's talking about religious extremism and fan and you know what you want the most it's it's and it's one comic talks about that in one comic mm-hmm. and and mongol you know underrated villain he's he's there so it's yeah fun. i love mongol oh and um another alan moore comic is whatever happened to the man of tomorrow which is the um basically the the storybook ending to uh, the silver age era of superman and it's only two issues and um you know the silver age is mostly characterized characterized with um goofy fun zany colorful stuff not 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 whatever happened to the man of tomorrow it's one of the darkest things superman comics probably the darkest superman comic i've ever read it's it's kind of sad and terrifying but I, but once again like you brought up birthright with that ending the ending there for the, when i read that ending i was like oh that's it but then i thought more about it and i was like wow that's a genius and then you know that's the end of silver age and you go straight to uh john byrne you know post-crisis mm-hmm. so yeah whatever happened to the man of tomorrow and um for the man who has everything by alan moore is my recommendations for superman but yeah, unless you have any further notes, thank you for joining me, Jay. Uh, is there anything you want to plug before? Oh, no, no problem. Um, I guess you can follow me on Instagram. I guess Jay Wealthy uh, twenty two. Yeah, if you want to follow me, you can follow me. Perfect. So, yeah. Perfect. There's that. Oh, and also follow follow this guy. <laughs> I don't know. Am I pointing? To... <laughs> yeah, follow this guy. He's great. Underrated channel. You you heard it here first. I don't I don't make the rules, but yeah. thank you again for joining me, Jay. It's been a great time having you. Um, uh, mm-hmm. like like I said one last time, make sure you check out Superman: The Last Days of Lex Luthor, July twenty fifth, when that comes out. If you want like a sort of sequel to Superman: Birthright, and maybe when it's all out, Jay will come back on and we'll talk about it together. That'd be awesome. I would love. It. Yeah. Great. Thank you all for listening. I'll see you all next Saturday. Have a great weekend and go read some comics. Yeah. Thank you, Jay. All right, no problem.